Yeah, guess what happened? That's right, my hard drives are running out of space. So what would you do? So uh, today I will be setting up a NAS for the first time ever. This is something completely new to me. I have never like messed around with like servers or anything like that or like uh, NAS devices, etc. So uh, uh, like today, I think like external hard drives, they aren't really uh, like useful anymore. You want something you can access easily from uh, multiple devices, so uh, it's either uh, buying some cloud space or setting up or setting up your own like server or a NAS. Well, NAS is technically a data server, anyways. Those uh, like those like uh, uh, cloud services, they are actually quite expensive if you really need a lot of space, like from 10 to 20 terabytes or even more. So. Uh, that's why I decided to build a NAS. Now, uh, would you uh, build or would you purchase like a pre-built machine like this one over here? Or would you build your own one from like used parts that are laying around? That was kind of that was kind of one of the main questions. Now, I don't want anything uh, like too overkill, like what Stepanzi or Bearded Hardware did. So uh, I wouldn't build a NAS from very powerful components if there's absolutely no need because I want this thing to draw as little amount of power as possible like uh, I think this device with uh, four to six hard drives sh should consume only like a few dozen watts if I'm correct like 30 watts or something so that's not much at all of course it depends a lot on what you will be doing with the device for me it's only about storing data like a like a, a data center, you could call it that. So uh, storing my videos, travel videos, overclocking videos, operating systems, images and so on. That's pretty much it. So I will not be loading any like programs from this device. So uh, I don't need like uh, the utmost pure speed from this device, but of course I don't want anything too slow. So uh, what I went with was this QNAP TS653D 8 gigabyte version and with four hard drives for starters. So this is the 8 gigabyte version of the 653D. I think it was launched last year. So it's like not the most newest device, but these devices don't really uh, like develop that fast for uh, the purpose they are designed for. It really depends on what you will you will be doing with the device. Like will you be running some virtual ma virtual machine or something like that. One thing that like uh, got in my uh, mind would be like building a rack server and uh, just setting up the uh, NAS server as one of one of the devices in the rack. But I think that's like the next step from this. So uh, that would be expensive and those very like uh, so if you build let's say a NAS that's only like one rack unit thick, they are often very very loud. So I don't I, so I don't want anything too loud for now. But yeah, so uh, eight gigabytes of DDR4 and the hard drives that I that I decided to go with are the Toshiba NAS N300 hard drives. These are four terabyte hard drives. So uh, four terabytes is kind of the best capacity for your money at the moment at the time of making this video. Hard drives haven't gotten that much cheaper during like the last like two or three years or so. So uh, I wouldn't purchase like two terabyte hard drives as they often cost like 50 to 70 euros. But you can find let's say four terabyte hard drives for something like 100 to 120 euros here in Finland. And if you want let's say an eight terabyte hard drive which would be like the most optimal one uh, right now if you set up let's say a four drive system but they often cost like 220 230 euros for the good models here in Finland because you want like proper hard drive models not the not the cheapest ones uh, if you ask me you want like NAS dedicated hard drives the uh, biggest oh, like the biggest question was uh, would i choose the western digital reds or the uh, Seagate iWolves or the Toshiba NAS N300s. Now uh, there was a huge debate around uh, Western Digital uh, red drives as they uh, used shingled magnetic reading on their NAS oriented hard drives, which is not something you want at all. You want CMR or PMR, however you want to call it. So uh, 
the safe hard drives for uh, CMR are the red, like is it red plus or red pro, then uh, Iron Wolves and the uh, NAS drives from Toshiba. The Iron Wolf from Seagate was a little bit more expensive than the N300, like 120 euros per 4 terabyte hard drive, but it's slower than the NAS N300 from Toshiba. I think the uh, standard Iron Wolf, the standard Iron Wolf is 5600 or 5900 RPM, but it only has 64 megabytes of cache. Now the uh, Toshiba NAS, free, NAS N300 is uh, 7200 RPM, uh, but it has 128 megabytes of cache, and it only cost me 109 euros per drive. So it was the cheapest and the fastest one at the same time. Now, the 8 terabyte versions would have been the most optimal ones for me, but the price is quite high still at the moment. So uh, if you want at least like four drives, as, especially if you want to go for RAID 5 and so on, you need to put at least not 800 to 900 euros in the actual hard drives. That is quite a bit of money. The uh, unit itself was very cheap for me. I think the deal was pretty all right. So I purchased the unit for 590 euros from Denmark. So that was definitely a good deal. The uh, same unit here in Finland, like in Finnish, in, uh, Finnish stores, the, uh, it usually costs around 800 euros. In Germany, the pricing starts from like 640 to 650. In uh, the very popular store called Mine Factory, the price of this unit is 720 euros. So uh, the total cost of this whole like setup for now is uh, close to 600 plus 400 plus on the drive. So that's over 1000 euros already. So if you want, let's say uh, four eight terabyte drives and plus this machine, you are looking at 1500 euros already. So uh, the price is obviously a big question mark because you can't put endless amount of money in uh, systems like this. If you watched uh, Stepanzi's video about building a NAS, aka bearded hardware, I think he used like X570 and six core Ryzen CPU plus five 16 terabyte drives from Seagate. So that's like three to 4,000 euro machine already. So that's a huge amount of money. So you have to understand that point. But anyways, so this is a six bay model. So I wanted something that could run six hard drives so, can, so I can easily upgrade later once the hard drives become cheaper as I don't really need more than like uh, 15 to 20 terabytes for now. So I will be setting up the four of the drives in RAID 5. So that means I will have in effect the capacity of three of the hard drives. So that means 12 terabytes in total. And the capacity of one of the hard drives will go all as in a parody or how do you call it. So I will lose the capacity of one of the hard drives, but I can lose any of the hard drives. So that's that adds a lot of like backup security to the whole system. Then I can easily upgrade later. So if I can see like uh, these drives going for 50 euros a piece, I can easily buy extra two. So then I would have five times four, 20 terabytes plus one drive for the uh, parody. It's very hard to pronounce. But anyway, so uh, if we just open up this device, you can see we have six removable uh, drive bays. So it's very easy to uh, remove. These are hot swappable and hot swappable. And you can easily just uh, put the hard drives in and just push them in. So you, I think you don't even need any screws or anything like that. The uh, each of the hard drives has its own LED over here. And I think this is a USB uh, copy function. So you can, let's say, uh, plug in some very small uh, USB external hard drive or a USB stick onto this uh, port over here, touch this button and it will uh, copy the uh, whole data of the USB device onto the NAS. So I think that's quite handy. I don't know. This whole machine is built around the uh, Intel uh, Celeron J4125 uh, quad core CPU. So uh, this is technically like a mini PC running all of your hard drives. And I think it has some like Linux based operating system built in the, in the device. And it's probably running from some USB stick, but I'm not sure because NAS devices aren't very uh, like, uh, I'm, not ver I'm not very familiar with these devices. If you want to learn a lot about these devices, you should check NAS compares, their website and their YouTube channel. I pretty much made the purchase decisions 
based on their videos. So uh, I watched the whole video of this device plus uh, some uh, like footage about the about hard drives and so on for NAS purpose. But anyways, so uh, let's quickly look at the back. So here at the back we have two 2.5 gigabit per second LAN ports. So I think you could run these like uh, combined and then you should have like five gigabits per second LAN connection to your router. So uh, these are the exhaust fans. We have the power supply port over here and we have four USB ports and one of which is USB 3.0 port. Don't know why the setup is like that. Like why is uh, one of the USB ports USB 3.0 and the rest three are USB 2. We have one PCI Express expansion port for uh, over here. So if you wanted to upgrade, let's say, uh, like a Wi-Fi option onto this device, or if you want to, if you want to uh, run, let's say, like SSD uh, caching for your uh, NAS array, you could install like an M.2 or PCI Express X4 M.2 uh, uh, add-on card. But for my purpose, that would be a complete waste, as I'm only using this for like data storage, and I don't need to constantly read and write things from the device, like. Uh, like especially constantly read stuff from the device, I wouldn't like uh, gain anything from SSD caching, so to say. Now, like later, I could also upgrade the drives themselves. So let's say I wanted to upgrade the drives to, let's say, to 12 terabyte models. With the RAID 5 function, you can do that easily. So uh, if you remove one of the drives, if they were set up in RAID 5, that's the same thing as if that particular drive was broken. So uh, then you would just install one of the 12 terabyte models in, you would rebuild the whole NAS uh, the same way if it was a broken like uh, drive and you would just install a, play, uh, a replacement. The whole repair process will obviously take even a few days, I don't know, but it will take a very long time. So, but that way you can upgrade each of the individual drives. It will take some time, but you can do it. I wouldn't run anything like RAID 0 from this device. And RAID 10 is a complete waste when you build a device like this for like just data storage. RAID 1 is just pretty much two drives and they will have, they are pretty much like copies of each other. I think reading is fast when uh, both of the drives are read at the same time, but RAID 5 is obviously the most popular solution for NAS devices. RAID 6 is pretty much the same thing as RAID 5. It adds just a little bit more like security. You can lose up to two drives before you lose everything. In this kind of scenario, that's like uh, too expensive. If you ask me, it would be uh, like a sensible idea if I ran, let's say like a 10 drive machine. So uh, a NAS with 10 hard drives. When running four to six hard drives, RAID 5 is obviously the most like sensible solution. So now let's just open up these hard drives and let's get them installed. So here you can see NAS N300 4 terabytes, 7200 RPM, 128 megabyte buffer cache or how do you call it anyways. So yeah, so these are designed for 24-7 operation and they are very suitable for NAS operation. This far I've only had like normal hard drives in my main like daily PC, like I have one 4 terabyte Western Digital Blue Drive, but I wouldn't purchase those Blue Drives for a NAS machine. So that's why you have to pay some extra premium for these kind of hard drives. Not sure what will happen with hard drives in the future, because these do have like physical limitations. So someday in the future, it's very likely that SSDs will replace even the standard hard drives in NAS devices and in service. But yeah, so I will now try to see how we can actually uh, install these to on in the hot swappable drive base. Okay, so the whole uh, drive installation process is actually pretty easy. We just remove one of the drive base like so and to install the hard drive onto the machine we only have to remove these plastic like side panels. There's a pull marking on both sides on the uh, I don't know how you call this in English, but are these drive modules or how do, how do you call them? But anyways, so now we will just put in the drive inside like so. 
there's actually there are actually screw holes at the back side. I think they are only for like two and a half inch devices like SSDs, but for or with three and a half inch devices like standard hard drives, I don't think you have to use the provided screws. So now we will just put in the side covers or panels back in or back on. That's one. That's the next one. So it doesn't really move at all. And we, then we would just slide the drive in. So that's pretty much. And it stays in just like so. So we will just fill in the rest to drive base and then we will have two, the last two as spares to be filled later. Now the mistake I made with uh, this device is that they do actually provide you two LAN cables. These are CAT5E LAN cables, so you don't have to purchase Ethernet cables separately to connect the NAS device to your router or switch. So you are covered by QNAP, so you don't have to buy separate LAN cables. So just saying. But yeah, so now, now I will just install the last two drives and let's see if we can actually turn on this whole device. Okay, so now I got the NAS unit up and running. You can see those activity LEDs on the front part of the unit that show up or show if there's some activity on the drives themselves. Now, uh, instead of me trying to mess around with the uh, included software to get the uh, NAS unit set up and running, I recommend you go to watch the very in-depth like a setup guide video made by NAS Compares on YouTube. So if you are interested in one of these units or if you have one and you wonder how to actually set up one of, how to set up one of these units, I recommend you watch the video made by NAS Compares. So that's a very good one. I'm actually referring to it at the moment when I'm uh, setting this up as uh, these NAS thingies, they are something completely new to me. So I'm not in any kind of expert when it comes to uh, like NAS units and servers and so on. So. Uh, I still have to learn a lot. At the moment I'm running the four drives in RAID 5 in a standard volume. So I didn't create a storage pool as I don't need the uh, snapshots safety feature that uh, creates like uh, recovery points whenever there's a major change in the uh, array or in the, uh, like in the storage pool. So that obviously takes up quite a bit of space from your storage but of, that of course at some uh, extra security if you need it like if you have uh, if you are let's say a business and you run like uh, important things out of this NAS then that could be something useful to you but uh, as I'm only using this to store like uh, videos operating system uh, installation uh, files uh, or installation medias and so on I think I don't need it I think I'm just fine with a standard volume and uh, one major thing is uh, how do you actually connect to this unit if you uh, go abroad or if you go outside your home? So a NAS isn't just about like uh, uh, a pack of external hard drives, it's also your personal cloud. So if you go abroad, let's say, once the uh, COVID restrictions allow it, so if you go traveling, so if I go with my laptop to let's say Taiwan, Thailand, wherever, I will obviously be willing to connect to this unit even from abroad, so, so outside my homeland. So I think for that purpose you need the QNAP My Cloud Service thingy. So I need to uh, check out how it actually uh, works and how it looks like. Now the only thing that's really uh, uh, still got me thinking is the uh, drive-like uh, option that I decided to buy. So four terabyte drives, they aren't that big anymore uh, in 2021. So uh, I personally wanted to get like eight terabyte drives, but that obviously increases the overall cost of this unit. So I will ne need to see what I will do. So will I just purchase two extra drives? So that will obviously give me uh, 20 terabytes in total minus the uh, part you, over you always lose when you install drives. So if you install, let's say a four, a four terabyte drive, it will show up as 3.63 or 3.64 in uh, like uh, File Explorer. So I'm sure you know that already. But I think the best option would be four to six uh, drives of uh, eight terabyte models, but I think I can get along just fine with four terabyte drives for now, but yeah. So we'll see. So uh, let me know what you think. What do you think about this particular uh, NAS unit? Is it good? 
what would be better than this at this price point and which kind of uh, drives would, would you buy in your own uh, case so uh, if you like to see this video then uh, please like and subscribe and uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one